Let's return to This Week in America. Here's your host, Rick Bratton. Welcome back, everybody, Coast to Coast, This Week in America. How to find a good companion, even among those who have been picked over, called out, damaged, dumped, and left for dead by Michael Lewis. It's written for adult people who are in need of finding a friend and possibly get married. Michael says everyone is in need of having someone to share what life offers them. Being alone is not good for anyone. Being without fun is a bad situation. Having a friendly and serious mate to live with is wonderful. Having a close companion is a great part of life. Michael and his wife, Brenda, have four daughters. Michael has a master's degree in engineering, a career including quality coordination, training management, and employee benefit management for 2,000 employees and spouses. He made a significant contribution to two national quality awards and completed a four-year ministry course by extension. Michael Lewis, author of How to Find a Good Companion, even among those who have been picked over, called out, damaged, dumped, and left for dead, is our guest on This Week in America. Michael, welcome to the program. It's great to have you with us. Hey, it's great to be here. I love Thanks the book. It, it is our pleasure. I love the book. Looking forward to this conversation. We'll talk about the title and the subtitle in particular in a second. But first of all, what was your inspiration? Where did you come up with the idea for writing the book, How to Find a Good Companion? Well, uh, my wife and I got married 34 years ago. And we had been married before then. We had um, uh, other spouses that we were married to before then. And things didn't go well. But after we uh, got together and mar uh, married, things started going well because we paid a lot of attention to it. And uh, after I did that for three or four years, I started uh, writing a book that I could give to other people. And that book is How to Find a Good Companion, even among those who have been picked over, called out, damaged, dumped, and left for dead. The author is Michael Lewis. That's L-E-W-I-S. Book available at Amazon, all of the usual places. Okay, now let's talk about the, the book title, How to Find a, a Good Companion. That's, that, that, that's common. I can understand that. I love the second part of that, the subtitle, even among those who have been picked over, called out, damaged, dumped, and left for dead. Talk about, it's it's a funny title, it captures your attention, stands out from all the others. How did you come up with this title and, and why? Well, what it represents is uh, what can be negative in a, in a marriage. Yes. Uh, every time somebody sees this book, they laugh at that second part of the title. <laughs> uh, and actually, that second part uh, identifies what happens to a lot of people while they're dating or in a marriage where one side starts uh, pounding on the other one in some way, and the other one has a choice to either stay with, with them or leave. No, it's interesting when you read the, the subtitle, you smile, and uh, the, then you start thinking about it, and suddenly it opens up a, a whole new thought process. The book is How to Find a Good Companion, Michael Lewis, our guest on the program. Let's talk about the basics. You're talking about companionship. It's good for you. Why are you married? Why am I married? Yeah. Uh, God uh, and Jesus put love in my heart and gave me the uh, motivation to be married by the time I got from uh, early teenage until now. Uh, they've done that ever since. They've been, uh, God uh, did that with uh, Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. And he put uh, love in their hearts and they started having children. And the children had children and went on and on and on until we have a large group of people in the United States and in the world from Jesus and God putting love in our hearts for marriage. Do you think married couples act differently? Oh, yeah. Uh, they have uh, reasons for acting different to stay close. Now, uh, 
individuals uh, outside of marriages have different matchups. And uh, the matchups for people in marriages uh, are good from just getting along and, and uh, listening to the other side. But some of them turn out bad. And uh, that can lead to uh, ending a divorce or in- ending uh, a, a dating situation yes. or creating a divorce with uh, one of the spouses. Michael Lewis, our guest on This Week in America, his book is How to Find a Good Companion, even among those who have been picked over, called out, damaged, dumped, and left for dead. Book available at Amazon, all the usual places. You often hear the, the term closed marriage thrown out there. Did you want a closed marriage? I didn't really know what uh, a closed marriage meant uh, until not too long ago. But a closed marriage means a relationship between two people, which is good, focused on each other. But there's a situation where there's not a closed marriage. It could be called uh, an open marriage, I think. And uh, that can lead to uh, failure in the marriage. How about producing children to create a family? Do you, did you want to do that? And how important is that in a uh, successful couple to, to have children and creating that family? Well, uh, I wanted to have uh, children to produce a family in my name. Uh, I look back in history and I had seven great grandfathers who uh, were in the Lewis family. And uh, they produced a lot of children and a lot of cousins for me today. And they're all wonderful people. So that obviously was important to you. Our guest on the program is Michael Lewis. His book is How to Find a Good Companion, even among those who have been picked over, called out, damaged, dumped, and left for dead. Book available at Amazon, the usual places. Log on to thisweekinamerica.us. Link on directly to get information on Michael's book. You know, there are at least a million couples who are not married. They're living together. Talk about their contribution to the, the overall population for society. Well, I went uh, back to the uh, 2019 U.S. Census Bureau data. And in the United States, there are 331 million people who exist here. But only 200, 231 of those are eligible for marriage. Children, for instance, are not eligible. Yes. And up to 231 million, 140 of them are married. And 110, 48 percent, are single. And that includes people who have never been married or who have been divorced or who have lost a a spouse through death. So that uh, that number there means a lot to us now. Yes, those are really amazing statistics. Uh, when you look at uh, the impact from marriage, marriage from God, talk about that and the, the impact you're looking for in this relationship. Well, God started that marriage that I mentioned earlier uh, through Adam and Eve. Uh, and uh, gave them love in their hearts, and they had lot, lots of children. And uh, that grew and grew and grew, and our children have increased the population in the United States and the world as they go through this. And it's important that people get married and have children. Michael Lewis with us on This Week in America. His book, How to Find a Good Companion, even among those who have been picked over, called out, damaged, dumped, and left for dead. Uh, great reviews for the book. You'll find it at the usual places, including Amazon. If you go to our website, you can link on directly. 
Uh, you mentioned before that both you and uh, and Brenda had been married before. How how are the children from the first marriage doing? How has that been? I had uh, two children from the first marriage, and I was real close to them when uh, his, my wife and I divorced. She started moving them around and making it hard for me to get along with. She moved for t uh, 120 miles west of my city, Kingsport, Tennessee, down to Oak Ridge, Tennessee. And she uh, stayed there two years with her parents, and that's where the ch kids were. And I went down every other weekend and picked them up and brought them home and kept them from Friday night until Sunday afternoon. After two years, uh, my ex-wife got a different degree from the University of Tennessee, and she moved to Atlanta and uh, with a new job. And she stayed there for two years, and I could only go down one Saturday per month to see my children. Uh, then after two years, she moved outside of Tampa, Florida, and that was hard to get to, uh, and uh, I would go down there four times a year uh, to see them. After two years, she moved to Columbus, Ohio, and that was closer than Tampa to uh, my hometown, Yes, but yes. I would go up there about once a month uh, to spend a day with them. And then after two years, <laughs> they moved wow. down to Orlando, Florida, closer to you. Uh, and uh, they've been there ever since. But my girls, uh, I stayed in touch with them by visits and by sending cards and by uh, making telephone calls to them every week uh, to stay in touch with them. And we've ended up being very close and in love. Well, I'm glad to hear that. And you put so much effort into that, of maintaining that relationship with the children, which is a, a very important part of, uh, of a marriage, especially when a spouse or both have had children from previous marriages. The book is, is really a, a, an excellent read, How to Find a Good Companion by Michael Lewis, our guest on the program, Good marriage is a term that's sort of thrown around a lot out there. How important is love in our hearts to actually have a good marriage? Not just a term, but actually in reality, have a good marriage. Well, it's really important. Absolutely important. Uh, love in your heart is critical uh, for handling your life. Uh, and uh, we get it from God and Jesus. And from that... The love in our hearts determines how we feel, how we act, how we do things, how we treat our friends, and most importantly, how we treat our spouse. Michael Lewis, uh, so much good advice in his book and, and thought-provoking uh, concepts that, that Michael talks about, how to find a good companion, even among those who have been picked over, called out, damaged, dumped, and left for dead. Uh, let's talk about marriage for gay people. It, it certainly is important to them. What are your, what are your observations on that in, in uh, the context of how to find a good companion? I think that's a very important thing for those people. If they're gay, then that's what uh, they're going to be. Uh, and uh, one of my daughters turned uh, in a marriage with another woman. My daughter was gay. That's when we found out about it. They fell in love and uh, get along really, really well. And not too long ago, my daughter got in a, uh, a pregnancy uh, and had uh, a son December the 4th, less than a year ago. And he's my first grandchild. And it's really important to me that 
he exists. I can see the smile on your face as you're talking about it. By the way, the video version of this program is up on YouTube. If you go to our website, thisweekinamerica.us, uh, go to the videos tab, you'll be able to uh, to see the interview with, with Michael. I think you mentioned that you and, and Brenda have been married for, what, 34 years? Am I remembering that correctly? Yes. Uh-huh. Well, let's talk about improvements along the way. There are always changes you make. You grow individually. You grow as a couple. What improvements for two people are important in your marriage? Because I'm sure you've you've had to do that. Brenda's had to do that in, in 34 years. What, what improvements are important to your marriage? I have a list of uh, six that I've uh, kept and keep my eyes on. <laughs> uh, let me read them to you. Yes, please. Can. Slowly first, so we can write them down. The first one, when your marriage starts and goes forward, it has time changing that you must handle with good acceptance. The second one, keeping your spouse as your most important friend among everyone. Number three, when your spouse has a need, you need to do your most in helping. When your spouse has success, you need to be happy about it. When your spouse has a problem, you need to help. You should always notice the situation and be able to react well. Those are my six that I try to follow. Well, it's worked for you for 34 years, and it's great information for all of us. One of the the many aspects of uh, the book that, uh, why it's receiving rave reviews, how to find a good companion, even among those who have been picked over, called out, damaged, dumped, and left for dead. Michael Lewis. Lewis is L-E-W-I-S, book available at Amazon, the usual places. Are any of the people you talk about in the book, are they real people? Or, or people you made up for the book? Uh, they're, they're, they've been made up. They're not real people. Uh, but they have real characteristics and behaviors. Uh, I have uh, been close to many friends, and I took things I learned from those friends to develop these eight that are in the book. And uh, I hope that uh, if you read the book, you'll find out about those eight. I have uh, those eight here if we have time. I don't know how much time we have. Got a couple minutes left. Why don't you, uh, for the video version, hold up a couple of these pictures and we'll continue talking as as we go through these. These are people that, um, okay, I mean, looking at that, it's like, yeah, okay, I could I could see somebody like that. Now, who did the sketching? This friend of mine that I used to work with uh, this is Helen, and uh, she spent uh, all of her time from high school trying to be a model. She was a, a homecoming queen in other contests uh, and kept her really occupied in that, and she never gave any any occupation to having a spouse until she was in her mid-40s. Yeah, that's one of those, that, yeah, profiled in the book, How to Find a Good Companion. We've got a few minutes. Let's look at another because even as you're describing these, it's like, okay, we know people like this. Who do we see, who do we see there? This is a guy named Henry. Uh, he's uh, 30 years old. When he left high school, his parents were sick, and he stayed with them and helped them uh, on a daily basis and didn't give any uh, attention to people getting married until he was 30 years old, and it went real well. One of those in uh, Michael's book, How to Find a Good Companion, and you'll find the book at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, the usual places. This is Rosie. Uh, she has three boys, and she and her husband uh, div divorced. So she's been trying to take care of them, but they're getting old enough to where she feels like she can look for another husband. It's interesting, the variety of, of people that you have in the book that you've described. This is a, a pretty good cross-section and somebody that, uh, that we can relate to. We've got time for several more here. These are fascinating. And again, I love the illustrations. Uh, this is, her name is Lily. Her husband uh, was deceased 
they had a daughter together, uh, and her daughter is in college. And uh, she is a nurse as a career. And she's decided since her daughter's in college, she can look for a spouse. I love the variety of people. I mean, various cross sections, somebody that we all can relate to. It may be us that you sort of profiled with the, with the pictures there. You've got uh, another one for us. Who is, who is this person? This guy's name's Walter. Uh, he had a lot of friends in his younger years. And uh, they got, got along well and uh, did, did a good job in getting along. He started taking jobs, and he, he started losing jobs. And he lost uh, three, three jobs uh, over the next, say, 20 years. And he quit taking care of himself. He drank a lot. Uh, he didn't take care of himself and didn't get close to other people. Oh, yes. But when, yes. He, but when he reached 50, he had some friends to come by and help him get back to where he was before, and he did, and he got married. Perfect. And again, the friendship, the companionship, that uh, uh, topics in the book, How to Find a Good Companion. We've got uh, another person from the book there. Who is this? This is Hel Hilda. She is a CIPA, CPA uh, by career, but she had a, she's in her early 30s, but she had a list of 10 things that she expected of people that she uh, thought about marriage. 10 things they had to comply with, all 10. And uh, nobody came, came close to that. Uh, so... Some friends of hers finally helped her cut that list, that list down to four. <laughs> and after that, she got a, a marriage that lasted. Good. You have to be, I guess, realistic in your search for a, a companion. Be nice to check all the ten boxes, but you need to uh, need to be realistic. I think we got what a couple more left there, or is that it? Yeah. This guy's name's Sebastian. He was in his early 50s. He was a highly technical person uh, with a degree in engineering and uh, technical training. He made a lot of money because of that. And he had nothing to do with any women up until his mid 50s. And uh, then he decided he needed to do that. So he started working on it. I think and then done. this guy, yeah. Ooh. Curtis, Curtis uh, divorced his wife. They had three grown children. He was playing golf most of his time, other than his work. Uh, he's decided that he needs to spend more time with a spouse, and he's working on that. Now, these are all pretty uh, extensive stories in the book and uh, it's uh, better to read the whole story than just what I said. Well, yeah. And the book, by the way, is available wherever books are sold. I'll send you to Amazon. That's the easiest place, but Barnes and Noble, the usual places. The book you're looking for is how to find a good companion. Even those, uh, um, uh, even among those who have been picked over, called out, damaged, dumped, and left for dead. Michael Lewis, the author and our guest, L-E-W-I-S, the book written for adult people who are in need of finding a friend and possibly getting married. Great wisdom. Uh, an excellent job, Michael, with the book. I know you've been working on this for a while, and, and excellent job on the book. Are you, i got 30 seconds here. Are you working on anything else now? You're a very talented writer. Anything else you're working on? I have four... Uh four books total. Uh, this one's going ahead of the other three. The uh, next one is one from Jesus. Christ Jesus provides blessings for your success is that book. And uh, I got that about 12, not 12, seven years ago when I had back brain surgery. And it took me a year to get over that. 
And uh, when I got over it, I started getting a message every day for a week to write a book for Jesus. And I kept putting it off because I really didn't want to. And finally, after a week, I decided I'd better get with it. <laughs> so that's how that one started. And then I had written poems on special occasions every year uh, for my wife and four daughters. And I had a thousand of those after 35 years. And I picked out 10 of the best ones in my mind for my daughters and developed a book on poems and 10 for my wife and her friends in another one uh, for a poem. So those are those are good, and I hope they sh end up showing up. I have a website that's being developed, and it's uh, jesusandmybooks.com, J-E-S-U-S-A-N-D-M-Y-B-O-O-K-S. Dot com. That's fantastic, and, and we'll, we'll have that on our, our site as well. And if you Google Michael Lewis, author, you will you should get that information and information on all the books, and hopefully we can talk about some of the others as well. Michael, it's been a pleasure having you on the program. Thank you so much for sharing your experiences and, uh, and sharing the book with us. Great having you with us. Thank you. It's good to be here. Really good. Thank I you. I love you. Michael Lewis, the author of How to Find a Good Companion, even among those who have been picked over, cold out, damaged, dumped, and left for dead. You'll find it at Amazon. Information on our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Back on today's program after these messages. This Week in America is online. You can visit our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Scott Pinkerton, associate producer of This Week in America. Jay Anderson, segment producer. Ben Watson, webmaster. Otto Bache, director of engineering and TV production. This Week in America produced and is a trademark of Blue Funk Broadcasting, LLC. For information on all of our guests and to listen to this week's show, our website again at thisweekinamerica.us. And I'm Sean Bratton, executive producer of This Week in America.